All right, what is going on guys? It is Tryhard Casual here coming at you with 10,000 subscribers for the first time. Holy hell, thank you. Thank you guys so much for that, it's awesome. We're finally at the five digit sub count and it just means the world to me. It just means so much and I get so overwhelmed. Oh! Anyway, on today's episode of Should You Buy It, we're gonna be talking about the Fallen Prince, the two-handed bonk stick. You know him, you love him, it's the Abyssal Bludgeon. Unfortunately, our sweet young innocent boy here has fallen out of our good graces because of other items being implemented that are just kinda better for what it does. We will be getting into all of that though, so just sit back, grab some popcorn. I'm doing the typical YouTube thing, but we're gonna start talking about it right now. So just what is the Abyssal Bludgeon? I can tell you what it used to be, which was the best in slot crush weapon. Right now, it costs around 20 mil, it's definitely down compared to where it used to be, and it doesn't require that high of stats to actually be able to use it. So this, this leads into a lot of questions, I think. Just what replaced it? What are your other options? You know, is this thing still worth buying? That's exactly what we're going to answer here today, and just hopefully guide you guys in the correct direction for what you want to do with the money you have. Right off the rip, we're just going to put down some numbers for you guys to just take a look at. You know, for these calculations, I'm gonna assume you're killing Serb because she's traditionally a monster you would take a crush weapon to. There are better options, but we're just gonna ignore those for now in favor of the video's crush weapon comparison. And you know, with any DPS calculator, there's a lot of variables. Things can change very quickly depending on your levels, all of your other gear. I mean, this is just gonna assume you're smacking Serb and not worrying about anything else, just to kind of see where the expected time to kill would be with each weapon. When we do look at all the numbers though, you can see it's just seconds between them. It's, it's not a huge difference on paper. But over the course of a trip, over an hour, over a whole task, you know, these seconds really add up to save you a lot of time. You know, I think another overlooked factor sometimes is just how much everything costs. Even though the Abyssal Bludgeon is 20 mil, if you compare it to the next item up that's just slightly better in terms of seconds per kill, the price is only a fraction, you know, it, it does seem like a good deal in that sense. Again, this is just to get a general sense of the items and their effectiveness on something that you would use it at. Beyond Cerberus, there are plenty of bosses you might want to take a crush weapon like the Abyssal Bludgeon to. We have the Calphite Queen, Seracnus, the Nightmare. They're all weak to crush. They're all bosses you would assume you'd take a crush weapon to. You know, Seracnus was the whole reason I wanted to make this video because I had a task for her and it was just the first time I bought the Bludgeon in the longest time. And I'm like, why is that? I think the two main reasons for this are that Inquisitors was added to the game, so just push the Abyssal Bludgeon down. Also, it used to be really good at Cerberus until Arclight was made usable because Cerberus is now considered a demon. I think those two factors really played a huge role in why the price dropped so much. Beyond just bossing though, there are other areas where you might want to use this. You know, as far as Slayer goes, you have your Calphites, your Gargoyles, Water Fiends, they're all weak to crush, you might use them on task for that. On top of that, it's actually pretty good for strength training because all of its options to attack are aggressive and you can train your strength. As far as training goes, there are definitely a lot of options to look at. The Abyssal Bludgeon could be an option for that depending on what you have access to or how much money you have. You know, there is something I haven't talked about yet and that would be the special attack on the Abyssal Bludgeon. It's pretty straightforward. You'll do more damage based off of how much prayer you're actually missing. So there is potential for this, I feel like, but it's so hard to compare it to the other damaging spec weapons. You have your Dragon Claws, Dragon Dagger, Crystal Halberd, there's just so many options to look at. And considering this one is hard to use because it has to synergize with how much prayer you're missing, I feel like it is very hard to get the best potential out of it. I did want to see how much you could hit with it though, so I took it to the POH, I just hit in the target dummy. I mean, with my 99 prayer missing, it can scale all the way up to the 50s for how much damage I deal. But you can push it even further if you wait to have one prayer and also use piety at the same time. If you were to use it as a spec weapon for somewhere, you have to think about where you're going to be missing a lot of prayer, you know, and you're using melee, and hopefully the monster is weak to crush. You know, someone on Reddit did have an interesting comment for me on that. They were saying maybe at Barrows, you know, your prayer is going to be drained constantly. This shows like some potential there, an easy setup for it. 
Also, maybe a Nightmare Zone if your prayer points are low and you have a Power Surge. But like I said, you just have to compare it to Dragon Claws, you know, some of the better options, and I, I just don't see it being better than that. You know, this game is huge. It's very easy for me to miss something, you know, just a, a tiny little niche area where this could be used at. So if you know of anything, if your friends know of anything, if your mom knows of anything, let us know down below. I will pin it in the update comment like I always do for these videos because I just want as much information in one place and it just makes sense. Alright, that's going to be the end of the video today. That is all of the RuneScape content I have for you. Uh, I do want to spend some time talking about something that's unrelated but I feel is kind of important, at least a little bit to our community I should say. You know, maybe you heard of him, maybe you haven't. Uh, Bodhi talked about suffering from a very serious skin condition recently in his last video. You know, just to give you guys a general sense of what he's dealing with, it's called topical steroid withdrawal. It's a very severe skin condition that can be brought on by overprescribed corticosteroid creams. To my understanding, those creams are typically used for people who have eczema and psoriasis, you know, things of that nature. Again, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. I'm just saying that from what Bodhi said, from the pictures he showed, the explanations he had for everything, it just seemed awful. It seemed absolutely terrible, and I would not wish that upon anybody. But apparently, this whole thing is completely unrecognized as an official condition by doctors. Which is just baffling to me, because it, it looked horrible. Again, it just looked absolutely horrible. All I want to say is that in Bodhi's video, he put out a link to a petition. It's basically just so some research can go into it, so it gets recognized. I feel like it's just the least we can do, you know, just sign a petition. Unfortunately, I am not able to sign it. You have to be in the United Kingdom to actually be able to do that. I know a good portion of my viewers are, so just, if you want to help out, if you want to support the cause, just sign the petition. Okay, this will be the actual end of the video now. You know, it's not much, but I just, I wanted to do something, you know, even if it's the bare minimum, just getting the, the word out. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about the Abyssal Bludgeon, or RuneScape in general, feel free to ask me. I want to give a very, very, very special thank you to my past and present patrons. Love you guys, as always. But I hope I see each and every one of you in the next one.